Good morning and welcome to The Blackening. America has a problem with definition, interpretations. Several things happened over the last week that um, have, I have a problem with, and, and you should too. Um, Tesla was approved to come into the area where I live. I live in an area called uh, the Hornsby Bend area of Dell Valley. And Tesla was approved to receive the tax breaks uh, they're going to get for the next 10 years while providing the school district with some money and some other things and so on and so on. But that, 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 that's not really the point. The real point was it made national news and there were conversations while it was going on about it being in Austin, near Austin, the Austin area. Rarely was it ever defined as Dell Valley, Hornsby Bend. In fact, they even interviewed the mayor on national television who had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this. In fact, they've never had a damn thing to do with us ever. I say that because when we look at what America has done and understand that the Del Valley area is about 84% people of the global majority, primarily Latino. So you wipe them out, you don't take them into account at all and you go ask a white man downtown that had nothing to do with them about the effects of this. This is the way propaganda, this is the way it's done. And I say that because that same white man was asked a question about a shooting that happened over the weekend. They also asked the police, um, the head of the union, a fat, nasty bastard. And he was on national television. And they defined the narrative about what happened there when there were actual eyewitnesses that they didn't interview, interview. No one interviewed the eyewitnesses. But the police supposedly interviewed the shooter, the, the murderer of a gentleman. And then the, the, the mayor had the audacity, the caucasity, to step out and say, Shots rang out, three guns, guns were pulled, all kinds of nonsense. But that's the narrative. And that's what happens in America over and over and over again. So here's a, 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 a white guy who was pushing his quadriplegic girlfriend who carried a gun and the police had targeted him. That's why I know the guy who shot him, he's a cop. Because he shot three bullets out a window. At the very least, he should have been charged with reckless endangerment. But that was a murder. That was an execution. And supposedly he turned himself into the police afterwards. And that's the narrative we're getting that we didn't charge him while we're investigating. We didn't hold him while we're investigating. We don't even know the guy's name. We don't know who he was. We don't have anything about him. Whereas if that had been a black man... We know when, who his second grade teacher was. We know the first time he had a bloody nose. We know the first time he had a fight with somebody at school. We know everything about them immediately because that's the narrative that's sent out. And we must understand that in the blackening, the people in power want to say certain things about those who are not in power. And primarily in America, it's been black people who ain't never had no power. They had a, a, a television special on about Reconstruction the other day. It's pretty interesting. About the most sweeping civil rights bill that ever passed in America. It was in the 1800s, not in the 1900s. And what was done afterwards? And it was done by making sure the narrative that was carried forth, especially by the Daughters of the Confederacy, vilified those who had no power to maintain the power where it was. The losers of a civil war, the traitors, bastards that lost, were able to rewrite the history because they were considered to be the brethren of the white people they just fought. 
but black people were never considered to be their brother. Abolitionists, I'll put that in quotes, should have been outraged by what was done. They didn't say you fought against us and you treasonous bastards should have everything you, and lose everything you have. They didn't do that. They actually went back and paid them for the loss of their goods and assets and, and resources, which was the black people that they had enslaved. They paid them money. They never thought about how much we lost, how much the black people who had endured that, how it infected, how it affected them and infected them, by the way. They have studies that now talk about the effects of the DNA, uh, effects on our DNA. And then I watched a white woman go off in Vermont on people talking about black people have had everything given to them. And I was like, what in the holy hell are you talking about? But she's arguing with people that they don't know anything about what to say back other than, have you lost your goddamn mind? But we must understand it's, an, it's a matter of interpretation of the dialogue, of the narrative that's being fed to us or fed to you. Because what happens is we all have a perception, and we talk about this all the time, of our truth. But your truth, when you live it, affects me negatively. In which case, I don't give a good goddamn about your truth. I don't care about your truth when your truth hurts me, incarcerates me, kills me. There are liberals right here in Austin, Texas. That and anytime I say something about badness, things are going on bad, the first thing they want to jump on is it's the Republicans. I'm going, really? Travis County's run by Democrats. In fact, every major metropolitan area in the in the country is run by Democrats. You can't blame Republicans. Use in on it. Use also making money. I watched Motherless Brooklyn the other day, which is basically the story. Of Robert Moses read up on him who said all I got to do is make sure I build people parks and they'll love me regardless of, of who I'm dogging out while I'm doing who I'm running over running out killing off while I'm doing it and, and neighborhoods I'm destroying they don't give a damn about that but they make you happy because you have a park what about the fact that the people who were in civil in Central Park in New York before that ever happened Central Park was built on an enclave where black people lived. The white woman in Virginia who was screaming about us getting things for free never thought about the fact that the college she was talking about, white people get more money for, for college than black people do. Black people don't have opportunities to go to schools on legacies. That we were literally locked out of those same schools she's talking about for ever. You didn't get anybody in until the 60s, really. I went, to, I went to Ohio State. I told somebody the other day, I said, look at the basketball team. They allowed one black player up until the 80s. One. They had ball players all day long in Columbus, in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana. Could have recruited all black team and, and smoked folks. But they allowed one black player. And you talk to me about what I got for free? We must understand that when we look at this table, there are those who look at the table from above and those who are laying on the ground looking up. And my definition of reality ain't the same as yours because you're on top where the food is. And y'all passing around the plate. And I'm at the bottom getting the crumbs as they fall off. And sometimes, every once in a while, somebody feels magnanimous and throws a big giant crumb off the side. They look off and throw a big crumb to somebody. And then that person, that person of color thinks they owe their allegiance to the person who just threw them the big giant crumb. Because now they're well fed. In the blackening, when they give you crumbs and you think you got a cake, it's a problem. Right now, they're in Congress talking about cutting the money to people who are dying. 
because they want to get the economy back on, on, on track. Whose economy? What economy? So white people can make money? You got to ask yourself a question while people are in the streets protesting, people being shot, people being sent back to work to die. Who are the police protecting? What are the police protecting? Why are they loaded like military individuals? Why does no one ask any questions of the police? By design, we're not asking the hard questions. And the problem is we are dying because of it. The blackening is you being treated like I've been treated all my life. That's the problem. Is suddenly you realize, oh my God, this is terrible. This is horrific. Said, I've lived horrifically all my life. Where have you been? Did you just wake up yesterday? Did you just now realize that black people were being treated like this? That that your Latino brothers and sisters in the streets were getting their ass kicked on a constant basis? That Mike Ramos was, was running because he, he knew they were going to try to kill him and they did? Were you not aware that when he put his hands up and turned around and they shot him any damn way with a less than lethal, whatever the fuck that means, bullet, that now he's afraid for his life and he's got to run because that's the only chance he's going to have is to get away. Please don't shoot me. Oh, damn, I'm going to die. I showed videos today from six years back, five years back, put it on my Facebook page of things I said then. Larry Jackson Jr., I, I, you can't tell me you don't know or you are just part of the problem give me the keys to the bus I'll drive you to the destination but if you're in the streets protesting you better understand what it is you're protesting and why it doesn't work your protest has no design to change the actual structure that creates the narratives and allows for the inter interpretation that gets me killed. Some of you fail to understand what I said when I said it, but I'm gonna say it again. When your behavior puts my life in danger, I don't give a damn what you gotta say anymore. You have shown yourself to not give a shit about whether I live or die, whether I have health care, whether I have shopping in my neighborhood where I can get fresh groceries and, and have food options, whether I'm stuck here where I only have one road in, one road out, and if there's ever an accident like there was the other day, we can't even leave the neighborhood. I can't get to someone who is in trouble besides me because we have to take care of our own. You have shown me who you really are. And the liberal progressives, as they turn around and tell me that you don't want Medicare for all, that you don't want to legalize marijuana because the pharmaceuticals have told you it's a bad thing, that people who are out here suffering from anxiety and chronic pain should be on opioids. You have shown yourself for who you really are because those who are in chronic pain and can't survive. They can't afford opioids. They don't even have health care to go get hooked on opioids. You don't even understand what the blackening is. And you live it every day. Because you're still standing on my shoulders, on my neck, and you can't move either. I'd like to welcome you to the blackening. Shamefully, I can't.